Well, thank you all for joining me. Uh, my name is Jules Lund. I am the founder of Tribe, which is a self-serve marketplace that helps brands find everyday people to celebrate them through beautiful content. So let's kick straight into it. How do you measure your influencer marketing success? Well, first and foremost, influencer marketing is not performance marketing with click-through attribution. Instagram just isn't designed that way, but it can be. So what are the measurements that do apply for influencer marketing? Well, there's the power of word of mouth, there's the operational ROI, and then there's increased ad performance. So, word of mouth. We know that it's far more credible to get a recommendation from someone you trust saying, how good is that brand? versus the brand themselves saying, how good am I? And so that's exactly how we measure influencer marketing, by that enhanced engagement that is created by that trusted referral versus brand generated advertising. So these are cost per engagements, the industry metric, the CPEs of different categories, and they've been broken down across 20,000 Instagram influencer posts from last year. Perfect for benchmarking, but if you actually isolate the engagement, you'll notice micro-influencers that have under 100,000 followers attract far higher engagement than those with over 100,000 followers. This is fascinating data that we haven't even released yet that essentially says that even though Instagram updated their algorithm away from chronological to more relevant content, a lot of top tier influencers that have half a million followers have made a lot of noise in the press saying that their engagement has dropped. I'm here to tell you that Instagram will always favor everyday users of its platform. And since that algorithm update, those with under 100,000 followers actually have an increased engagement. Those under 25,000 followers, their engagement has increased 50%. It is far more powerful than ever to fill your campaigns with an army of micro-influencers versus one or two or three top-tier influencers with over 100,000 followers. Because the smaller the tribe, the more potent the influence. So engagement is great, but how do I measure who engaged? introducing Instagram's paid partnerships tag. Soon, all the influencers that you collaborate with will be required to tag you as a business partner. So for the first time ever, not only do influencers get access to Instagram's rich insights, but all of those insights are funneled into your Facebook Power Editor. You can see how that engaged and by who. You can see their age, their gender, their location to benchmark that against your target audience. And even more exciting is that here you can sort it by engagement to be able to see out of those 100 influencer collaborations, which are the top 10 that resonated the highest. And it's almost like market research for your advertising because not only can you then boost that piece of content, um, to the influencer's audience, so you could put 10 pound down to reach now 100% of their audience, but you can actually take that influencer generated content and create an ad from that from your own account. So you know which pieces of creative convert. It's been validated by an audience and now you've turned influencer marketing into performance marketing because you can add a click through button you can target a precise audience and you can now measure those results. Currently, the Instagram paid partnerships are only available for verified influencers or selected business accounts, but my prediction is that every influencer that hashtags ad will soon be required to tag you as a business partner. And it is brilliant for the industry for us to come out of the shadows and be legitimized by Instagram, seeing this is a huge marketplace for them. The second one is operational ROI to use tech to cut your influencer campaigns down from 100 hours to 10 hours. 
So technology gives you back time and money. A quarter of all briefs receive their first beautiful content submission within 25 minutes. Most briefs get between 50 to 100 submissions in their first week alone. So now technology allows scale for you to be able to create a campaign in minutes, receive content within hours, and complete your influencer marketing campaign within days. Now most campaigns run for a couple of weeks. Vaseline, part of Unilever, we presented to them on the Wednesday afternoon. She said, Halloween's on Sunday, I need to run a campaign, and within a couple of days she did. Got beautiful content. But engagement aside, just being able to crowdsource the variety and the volume of stunning content is a very clear and measurable operational ROI. So let's talk a bit about increased ad performance. As you know, Zuckerberg has removed all of the organic branded content from the Facebook newsfeed and put it in the Explore tab. Now, that means that like TV, radio, print and outdoor, Facebook and soon to be Instagram is now pay to play. It was always gonna happen. Now I caught up with the Facebook team in Singapore and I asked them, if the whole point is to create more meaningful connections between users and their family and friends, surely all of those brands that have been put in the Explore tab will have to create advertising to reach their consumers and it'll have a decrease of meaningful relationships because it'll be cluttered with advertising. And they said, we're not going to increase the volume of advertising. The price of those ads are just going to be a premium. We will be looking back on November of last year as the glory days of Facebook, when you could take a crap image, target your audience, and put money behind it, and you were guaranteed to engage them. Now that it's competitive, those ads are gonna cost more. And it's gonna put pressure on your return of investment which means you're gonna to have to get the creative right. So as we know, there's two ways to reach your consumers in this new world. The first way is to actually collaborate with those family and friends in the newsfeed. They are micro-influencers, they are everyday people with between 3,000 and 100,000 followers. The second is through paid advertising. But as I say, there's three things you have to nail to increase your ad performance. The first one is variety, volume, and then creative formats. So let's start with variety. TV, radio, outdoor print, that is mass marketing. Facebook and Google isn't. They are the most sophisticated direct marketing operations in history. Their superpower is in being able to target precise audiences with precise messaging. At Tribe, we are a content company and we struggle to generate the variety, the volume that is required to appeal to all of our different brand personas. Now our target is you guys, marketers. So we can put a really simple ad in Facebook to target you, but the reality is that might only appeal to brand managers that work in the fashion industry. Then we have to appeal to those that work in the food industry, or those brand managers that work in sport, or travel, or beauty and personal care. Now, even if we nail the personalization, all right, because that is the key to conversion, because your consumers no longer expect the ad to feel relevant, they want it to feel personal. So even if we nail that ad set, that might only appeal to brand managers that are in a small business. So then I have to replicate that for brand managers that work in an agency. And then I have to replicate that again for brand managers that might work in a global company. Even if I nail that, variety is nothing without a constant supply. Because as you know, it's not set and forget. I can't just put up an ad set and leave it for six months. It goes stale and it suffers from ad fatigue. And then don't even get me started on the different ad formats because that's just static images. But that might not resonate. I might need six second ads. I might need vertical video. I might need cinemagraphs. I might need stop motion. 
And so you start to realize that we're completely underprepared. It is tough being a marketer right now. Yes, Facebook advertising is the gift of our generation, but the fragmentation requires a whole different recalibration. You can't just grab your catalog ads or your billboard ads and shove them into an Instagram news feed. Otherwise, your consumers will do one of two things. They either block it by saying it's not relevant, which happens more than you think, or worse yet, you spend tens of thousands of pounds on content that is completely ignored by your consumers. And the reality is creative agencies alone cannot service this growing demand for variety and volume. And ironically, for the first time in history, your actual customers can because they are armed with smartphones. The manufacturers are racing each other. They're investing in the creator. So your customers have now become creators and they have all just graduated through the University of Instagram. Nearly one billion everyday people can now craft stunning content. So they can service the variety, the volume, and they are the experts in crafting thumb-stopping content. We already know that user-generated content drives 6.9 times the engagement versus brand-generated content. Making your customers the fastest growing creative solution on the planet. And just like the masses disrupted the transport industry and the masses disrupted the hotel industry, I am betting my house on the fact that within a couple of years, people-powered marketing will be a multi-billion dollar marketplace. And this is how Dan Murphy's, Australia's largest liquor retailer, has used us over the past 18 months. So they've run 25 different campaigns through Tribe um, for beer, wine, spirits, some in collaboration with Cara, their media agency, and it's blindingly simple. So they upload a brief in 10, 15 minutes and they invite tens of thousands of content creators to go out and celebrate a certain product. Now, if the content creator actually doesn't have the product, they go out and buy it. Because we believe if they don't own it or they're not willing to buy it, they have no right to recommend that their tribe does. So they will um, create a pick or a clip celebrating Rosé, for instance, and they will add a price. So you will then get all these submissions, as I said, 50 to 100 in the first week. And this is your inbox that starts to get flooded. You get to vet the influencer, but only by first vetting the most important proposition, which is the content. You see the content first. If you like it, you buy it. If you don't, you don't. You can see the influencer, their average engagement, their caption, the image, the fee, also our 20% service fee on top of that. You can click through to the feed to see if that's the sort of uh, conversation you want your brand to be a part of if they've worked with competitors. You have full control. It is 100% brand safe. And so you just select the one you like, and then the influencer gets the notification, they post at their highest engagement. And if it does really well, you can actually purchase the content rights. Dan Murphy's and 6,000 other brands around the globe, and I'm not just talking about big brands even though they're the ones I've represented on slides. If you don't even have a product in store, we can organize sampling or um, you can give them a code to buy it online. So this is for small businesses with a thousand bucks. There's no subscription, there's no minimum fee. You've literally got to that content page, shortlisting it, having not paid a cent. So Dan Murphy's now has 900 Instagrammable pieces of content that they can share on their owned channels for free. So that is basically one piece of content for nearly three years. Magazine quality, billboard size. And because it's gone out on social, you know exactly which pieces of content have performed really well. And you can pick the 10 in your post campaign report and then put those into the advertising by buying the rights. Bus shelters, EDMs, point of sale, or like these guys, they just got content. They also got a recipe from the influencers. And very quickly, they were able to create a whole book out of it. It's not just still images, boomerangs, there's cinemagraphs, stop motion. And we've just put graphics at the end of this just to demonstrate that it transcends social media. That person went out there and purchased a 35 pound bottle of Moet 
They did two hours of stop motion, they submitted to you. And you could have said, nah, don't want it. But obviously someone goes to that much trouble, of course you're gonna buy it. So you're only limited by the creativity that you ask for. Don't think just still images. You can create a whole campaign of slow motion or time lapse, or even carousels showing that path to purchase. We're also creating this thing called content only campaigns. Basically, we've got a lot of brands coming to us saying, hey, I don't even need the influencer. I just love their content. So what we're doing is brands can buy packages of 10, 20, 50, and 100. You can put in a brief, but the influencers generate that stunning content. We, we give it to just our exclusive premium content creators. They fill a content bank. So it's like a stock image library, but on demand and shot to your spec and you purchase it, they never have to actually publish it on their feed, it's for your advertising channels. So let's just tie all of these methodologies together into what I feel is the perfect 2018 strategy. So Unilever Omo, they used Tribe and they were able to craft pieces of content mimicking their mood board images. So they put in six and within a few days they get 100 pieces of content back from the influencers who've nailed it. So they, they then picked the top performing pieces of content. Now keep in mind, if they're gonna put tens of thousands of dollars behind each image, of which they did, they're gonna to wanna to know that performs. Influencer marketing was the perfect multivariate test. They were able to see which ones did. And so they're engaging and then they see the one that goes, wow, that's over-indexed, it's resonated. So what they do is they take that image and then they apply motion and they put some graphics on it. So you've got this emotional connection and then they've got the rational, but most importantly, they've turned it into performance marketing. They've added a click-through button and they've chosen a specific audience, those that purchase products for sensitive skin. And this is really powerful. Once again, that's why people stop and look at this content because it looks like a friend. If that was brand-generated content, it would be a blue sky and that person possibly wouldn't have dreadlocks. Let's now talk about influencer fraud as I wrap up. So, it's really easy for us to spot and block fake followers or fake engagement. They're not sophisticated products. We built a data team a couple of years ago, two full-time staff members that have built a really sophisticated algorithm that is able to not only combat uh, fake followers and likes, etc., but measures it. So every account that connects to our platform is um, scanned on a number of different inputs. Everything from historical spike of followers, the ratio between their likes and their followers. So if they've got a thousand likes and, and they've got two comments, it flags it being suspicious. Um, we, we can do a reverse image Google search. So if that piece of content has appeared online, um, we block it. Not only do we connect them as they come in, but we also scan, our audience vital signs scans them four times a day since. Um, the bottom line is you have to fight tech with tech at this point and it's really easy to be able to do that. So as I wrap up, here are the nine methods to maximise your 2018 influencer strategies. The first one is know exactly how you're measuring your own output. Is it word of mouth? Is it the operational ROI? Increased ad performance? We now know that filling a campaign with hundreds of micro influencers is their engagement is far higher which means it's never been more powerful. So Instagram's paid partnerships tag will release insights, however, don't wait for that. Because like advertising on Facebook in the early days, and like Google AdWords, it's really cheap, but as soon as it's proven, the prices skyrocket, okay? So at the moment, it's harder to measure, but the rewards are far greater. If you value speed, scale, and generating content at a fraction of the cost, tech is really your only option now. Remember to empower your customers to provide the variety, the volume, and the thumb-stopping content. Brand safety, so demand content upfront. Use the IGC in your broader advertising and validate that content before investing in it. And then rely on tech to protect yourself from influencer fraud. So if you just take out your phones very quickly, go into Instagram, just type in at tribe.content and you'll see hundreds of case studies, possibly your brands from around the world, possibly your competitors' brands, but it'll help you get your creative juices flowing around how to craft a brief that'll get what you want. So if you want to uh, continue the conversation, tribegroup.co, would love to uh, collaborate with you. Thank you very much for your time.